Lots of people believe that an antenna tuner makes just the transceiver happy, and the power from the mismatched antenna is lost. We only need the tuner to make sure the transceiver doesn't lose output power because of poor SWR. I've heard this from big YouTubers in the ham radio world many times over the years, and I believed it too until I saw a great video from Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter titled Antenna Tuners, the Feedline Side. I highly recommend it. It explains in detail what is really going on. Also, Mark the Ham Florida Man has done several videos on this subject, trying to convince the public of a big misconception. So I said, let's test it out in the real world. I bought an LDG 200 Pro 2 antenna tuner and built the following test setup. My ICOM 7300 is connected to the tuner and the tuner is connected to my Diamond SD330 screwdriver antenna. With this antenna I simply push a button up or down to adjust the length or position of the loading coil. This allows me to make it resonant very easily between 3.5 and 30 MHz without the need for a tuner. In the first step of this test, I measured the antenna with a Rig Expert Stick Pro and tuned it to 40 meter at 7.078 MHz. I was able to achieve an SWR of 1.3. Then I transmit with different power settings on the ICOM 7300 and measured the received power with an RF meter, which is standing in my living room. There is no unit on the RF meter, it's just bananas what I used to compare. I make a note of all RF meter readings and then readjust the screwdriver antenna to degrade the SWR by lengthening or shortening it. I adjusted the antenna to a measured SWR of 11, then 9.5, then 4.8, then 5.9 and corrected the mismatch with the tuner. At each set SWR, I recorded the RF meter with a video camera. This way I end up with a data table that I can use to create a graph to better visualize the results. We should be able to see if the tuner is really improving the SWR mismatch and not just making the transceiver happy. Let's analyze the data. What you see here is the generated chart from the recorded data points. On the x-axis you have the power setting of the transceiver. On the y-axis you have the RF meter reading. There is no unit, that's why there stands bananas. For each antenna setup I transmit it with 5 watts, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. At 5 watt you can see the lines are suddenly dropping. It seems like the real power was lower than shown on the display. Let's test the theory that reflected power is lost and transformed into heat and the tuner is making only the transceiver happy. If we look at, for example, the dark blue line, which is the antenna setup without the tuner, at 30 watts we get a RF meter reading of about 62. The same RF meter reading we get for the yellow line at about 35 watts which is a tuned antenna with an originally SWR of 9.5. So that means we need only 5 watts more transceiver power to get the same RF meter reading as the antenna without the tuner. If we calculate the reflected power with an SWR of 9.5 for 35 watts input power, we get 13.86 watts. 13.86 compared to my real world measurement of 5, that means to me the reflected power can't be lost, or at least not the major part of it. If we look at the orange line, the antenna setup with SWR of 11, it is getting closer to the calculated reflected loss. But even then we have less loss than we should have if you believe the reflected power is lost. What else is there to discover in this chart? I can see that a shortened antenna 
is worse than a too long antenna with the same SWR mismatch. The green line, SWR 4.8, is lower than the purple line, SWR 5.9. Same goes for the orange and yellow line. My final thoughts. The antenna tuner is not as bad as some of us thinks. The loss isn't that big if your SWR antenna mismatch is in a reasonable range. I hope that video helped. I wish you a nice day and thanks for watching.